Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you are, remember, you have greatness inside of you. Welcome back to another Ab Daily News with your hockey coach, Guru Cold Frenchy. Today, episode number 283. What your menu calls today? First of all, guys, the Montreal are not sprinting anymore. They are limping. Then, my second subject of the guys about the Montreal Canadian draft pick 2023. I'm going to give you four front players at front position ever they select pick number five during the next NHL draft 2023. But before we start, guys, we invite you, please don't forget to click on the like, subscribe to the Hockey Nation Live Show, and leave me a comment about this episode. And let's dive in. And talking about my first subject of the day. My first subject of the day, guys, about the Montreal Canadiens are limping. What are you talking about? First of all, guys, the Montreal Canadiens have five more games to play now. Martin Zinui was thinking a couple of weeks ago they need to finish strong the year. But obviously, with what's going on with the team right now, they honestly, they cannot do anything over the fact they are limping and not sprinting. What the reason why, if you look about the game against the Carina Hurricane, the Carina completely dominate the Montreal Canadiens. The game against the Florida Panthers, Montreal was not in the game at all. And then again, the Philadelphia Flyers, this game was so boring. Whatever, Montreal lost by one goal. If you think about this, the Montreal right now are really limping. Another reason why they are limping, guys, because they're missing half of the team. They are all gone for injuries, unfortunately for them. And now they announce that David Savard is out for the rest of the season. Sean Manian is going to be on the surgery for a groin. Now he's out differently. Then Alex Benzil broken his right ankle. Last game again, the Carolina Hurricane out of the lineup now for the rest of the season. And then they announce that Yuri Slavkowski will not returning with the Montreal Canadian. And then they announce that RHP and Jordan Harris are day today. Not guaranteed are going to play for the next game again, the Detroit. Red Wings. Uh, now, Montreal call up uh, Kaden Primo, goaltender, is going to start again the Detroit Red Wings uh, tonight. And then Corby Shoneman uh, joined the Montreal Canadian. With this call up, I really expect Jordan Harris is not going to play with the Montreal Canadian again the Red Wings. Uh, honestly, if you think about this guy, the reason I said the Montreal is limping is because he had nothing in the tank. Not about the fact they want to tank him to get a better pick, but they are nothing else. They are exhausted mentally and physically. And plus, they have kind of talent, skill, cannot square with any other team in NHL. Many of them should not play with the Montreal Canadiens right now. And you can see they cannot play with any other team. Just an example, last Saturday, Alex Benzel, he was your center number two for your team. Cannot. They try, but they have no energy anymore. They are tired, they are fatigued, they cannot respond well. You can see a team really flat, and that's what you're going to see next five games for the Montreal Canadiens. I don't see any change because they're missing too many pieces of the puzzle. Finally, Martin Sinu announced at this moment of the year, they have no development to do anymore. The only thing they try to do is to get out of the season quick they can and move on for the upcoming season, 2023-2024. There are no evaluation to do. They already know what's going on with Korean Up and other players for that team. So at this moment, guys, it's a 50 more period, 300 more minutes to play. And that's it, that's all. I don't expect too much. Again, the Detroit, Washington, you're going to get Toronto, and then you get Boston next week. And just give you an idea, season need to finish very soon for the Montreal Canadiens. That's the reason Montreal... Tried to finish strong the year. Obviously, they was tried to sprinting all the way to the game number 82. They are limping now since game number 72. It is what it is with so many injuries. They just accumulate day after day. And obviously, Montreal cannot compete anymore, in my opinion. So, I would like to hear from you guys. What do you think about my first subject? Montreal can hear are limping, are not sprinting anymore. And let's move on now, guys, for my second subject of the day. My second subject of the day, guys, about the Montreal Canadiens draft pick 2023. A lot of quite people are starting to ask me about what Montreal can pick or some people bring some different name. And I want to give you four different players. I believe Montreal Canadiens could select First of all, I think Montreal Canadiens are a little bit more looking by position for that pick. I understand most of people said you go by talent and by skill, yes. But I think Montreal Canadiens are a little bit more careful. They have to look for not a left defenseman. They have enough 
right now at left defenseman. So I think you will skip out the left defenseman at pick number five. If Mishkov is still available, no discussion, guys. We want Mishkov. But if he's already out of the leaderboard with Carlson, Fentelli, and Bedal, who is the number five? Many people talk about Devoski, Will Smith, uh, talk about Ballo, talk about Benson, talk about Yager, talk about Shelley. But I'm going to give you fourth front players. I think Montreal Canadiens could look to draft one of them. First of all, as a center, I have two players. Nate Danielson for Brandon in WHL and Will Smith that play with a Team National U18 for the Team USA. Then I have for you guys the right defenseman, David Rent Batcher. Then finally, I have the left winger from Russia, Daniel Bott. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit more information for each one of them and who I compare them for an NHL player right now in NHL. So let's start with Nate Danielson, a center 6'1", almost 6'2", 185 pounds, shoot on the right. He is a compare him to Dylan Carson for the Buffalo Sabres. The background of Danielson was named co-captain of his WHL team during his draft season and has played a big all-situation role for Brandon. He is one of the top play drivers in the WHL this season. It was over a point per game the prior season. It was invite to Canada U20 camp in the summer and U18 camp the prior summer. He was the number five pick in the WHL Bantam draft. Now, what I'm thinking about him, Danielson is a well-round center who has a lot of NHL threat. He is a big body who skate and compete well, which one combined with his offensive touch, allow him to be effective in a lot of situations. He has an excellent stick and is able to beat defender with skill at initial speed often. He makes a lot of play with pace, but also show the vision and shot threat to run a power play off the edge. Danielson is a competitive two-way center who win a good share of puck battle and can kill penalties. He looked like a potential eye in the lineup, all situation center in the NHL. This is all about Nate Danielson. My second player I want to talk about, guys, is Walt Smith, a six foot, 178 pounds. I compare him to Edgeny Kuznetsov for the Washington Capitals. Smith, he was a number one center, a leading player on this year U.S. NTTP team, Team USA national team. He has been one of the most positive players ever in the U18 season with the program. Smith was invited to USA World Junior Camp, but was cut. He's committed to Boston College. Here's what I'm thinking about Smith. Smith is a dynamic offensive player who stands out every game with his talent. He has tremendous puck skill, vision, and overall offensive creativity and project to be a major asset on the NHL power play. He skates well. He makes so many high-difficulty plays at a strong pace, which lends well to his pro projection. Smith is a high-end passer who is also able to finish chance from the dots. The only real worth in his game is I would not call him an overly physical or a high energy player. I don't think he lack effort is around the puck a ton whatever he is on the ice and ever at time kill penalty for the program of a team national USA U18. My next player I want to talk about guys on this is the David Renbacher, 6'2 defenseman, shoot on the right, 185 pounds, compared to Brett Petschi for the Carolina Hurricanes. So you can see with him a top four defenseman, any team in NHL. First of all, Renbacher was a top four defenseman for his NL team this season. He had the second most positive draft season by a player in NLA history behind Austin Matthews and the best by a defenseman. He was a top player for Austria at the 2023 World Junior. He played regular minutes for Austria senior team at the Tuchland Cup. He played for Austria U20 team at the 2022 World Junior as well. What I'm thinking about him, Rimbacher is an excellent all-around defenseman. His mobility stands out immediately, especially as a 6'2 right shot defender. Rebacher gap control is quite strong, killing a lot of play due to his feet. He can 
close on guys with his body too and show a high compete level to win back Pox. He's very polished defensively for such a young player, a project to shut down good NHL forward. He's able to both skate a pass Pox up ice. His offensive touch is not elite, but he has creativity with the puck and see the eyes well. He project as a two-way top pair defenseman in NHL. Finally, my last player, guys, is Daniel Bat, a winger, 6'5", 205, shoot on the right, compared for me, Alex Tuck for the Buffalo Sabres. But has been one of the top forward in the Richard Junior League this season. It was a near point per game player in the league the prior season. He earned limited ice time with the Lokomotiv KHL team. Both local team MHL and KHL team were top club this season, but sweet up for Russia U18 team at a 16 years old at the Lincoln Risky, Black Sea Cup and the European Youth Olympics. His father Anton played professionally hockey and the KHL in Russian Super League for 17 season. What I'm thinking about him, guys, is Daniel is a large, highly skilled forward who can score but makes a lot of the crafty play with the puck and small area. And with his massive wingspan, he is able to put pucks past a lot of shaker. He can both make a finish play well, but he's more of a goal scorer with a shot that can score from range. But he's not blazing fast and his strike technique is just okay. But for a 6'5 guy, he can motor up the ice quick well as a strong first step and he would be able to power his way to the net of rush at a higher level. He gave a solid effort and is often involved in the play. Evan thought I don't see him uh, I iron threat other uh, his side but check every box a project to be a major part of NHL lineup. Uh, this guy give you all the idea what I'm talking about. The Montreal Canadian could consider to draft one of them. Yes, there are other players. Yes, everything could change from today until June. But until then, guys, I really believe Montreal should targeting those players. If ever, Fantasy, Mishkov, Beda, and Carson, they are not on the leaderboard anymore. Montreal should consider to get Nate Danielson or Will Smith as a center. David Rembacher, right defenseman, or the winger, Daniel Bott, will be interesting what the can use and his staff is going to select as a number five right now for the Montreal Canadiens. Whoever Montreal could win the lottery and we get who? Connor Bella would be interesting. Leave me a comment, guys, what you think about those players and your name. If you want to know more about different players, guys, let me know. I'm going to make other video, guys. I love to discuss and talk about hockey. I know some of you always leave me great comments. You guys are excellent to reply to my videos. So, this concludes, guys, my second subject of the day. Here we go, guys. Short video. Episode number 283 done. We, we talk about Montreal and the end, limping and not sprinting anymore. And then different NHL draft prospect 2023 where the Montreal and the end could select as a pick number five on this draft fest. Hopefully you enjoy it. And thanks for watching another great video. But before we leave, we invite you. Don't forget to click on the like, subscribe to our Canadian show. And leave me a comment about this episode. And you have greatness inside of you. And we wish you an amazing, great, blessing day, everybody.